What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Grady and I listen to country music and whatever else I want to. And I've been gone for a little bit, but I'm coming back with a new edition of Single Smackdown. So the way Single Smackdown works is I take three new singles that are launching new projects, pit them against each other, and they are judged on a rubric of lyrics and delivery, sound and production, and X Factor points. So you can get 10 points for the lyrics and delivery of a song, 10 points for the sound and music and production of a song, and then five points for kind of X Factor. What is the sort of cultural significance of a song? And today we got three heavy hitters going against each other. We got George Strait classic he's back with a new single called every little honky tonk bar we got dustin lynch not my favorite guy in the world who's got riding roads and we got thomas rett kind of the undeniable a-list star of the country moment who's back with a new song called look what god gave her haven't heard any of them and today i'm going to be checking them out and talking about them right here so without further ado let's get started first up we've got dustin lynch's riding roads which on title alone, I'm ready to not like. Um, I'm just I, Dustin Lynch to me is is just someone I've never been able to get on board with. But let's just see. Let's just see. Let's go in with an open mind and listen to this song. Okay, so that was Riding Roads by Dustin Lynch. It was written by him and Ashley Gorley and Zach Crowell. Uh, that song is, gosh, what would I say overall for this song? It's like, like generic content. I feel like if you added certain things into like a country radio song generator, you would get Riding Roads. I mean, subject matter wise, tempo wise, it's that kind of slow bordering on like trying to be sexy mid-tempo kind of song that is just kind of radio blah that's there um not a very exciting song it's about um wanting to drive with this pretty girl beside you it almost feels more like a love song to with the car um and the, the 38s 38s are the 38s making the world go round that's one of the lyrics here those are referring to great tires and uh, just just wanting this girl to slide over next to you. I mean, these are things that we've been making fun of in country music for like six years now. Uh, the, the hop up in my truck and ride with me kind of songs, but here we have another. So, I mean, Dustin Lynch just keeps putting out just, I don't know, just generic stuff. I feel like I have no sense of him as an artist. So let's get into the breakdown of this song. I don't have a ton to say about it. Lyrics of this song, lyrics and delivery. I would say the delivery is kind of Sam Huntish talk singing. And he delivers it fine for what it is. It's a song that's literally just get up in my truck. Yeah, it's got all the hallmarks of the bro country songs. We've got girl. Uh, we've got uh, sitting next to him in a chair. I mean, there's some fun words in here. At least we have koozie. That's a nice word. Uh, even though if it's promoting drinking and driving. And I think, I don't know. There's not a ton of good lyrics here. Only light is the flashing yellow. Only thing that I want is your kiss. I don't like the little uh, duo of I'm turning right while you're turning me on. That just seems random. Right and on aren't opposites of each other. Maybe if it was I'm turning left while you're turning me on, because that would mean you're going to a back road, you're taking a left turn. That's kind of an expression, but I'm turning right while you're turning me on. That just feels lazy. This song to me, it just feels pretty lazy. It's only about the groove. So lyrics and delivery, I don't know. There's nothing egregious in here. It's just we've heard it all before. So I'd give it uh, like a three and a half out of 10. Nah, that's like being mean to the delivery. Let's say a four out of 10. Production slash sound. So here's where the song kind of surprised me a little bit. I actually like that there's not a snap track on this song. I wonder if at some point in its iteration it had a snap track. And I'm hearing a lot of songs now that I wonder if, you know, not to toot my own horn, but if, if some snap tracks have been taken off some of these current singles that we're getting. And I've heard some rumblings from a few people that that has happened in a couple Nashville singles. But I like that there was real drums in the song. It actually added a lot. I loved the little guitar solo in the bridge. I think there's moments here where, oh wow, it just breathes a lot more nicely than other songs that feel so synthetic because it has a lot more natural instrumentation. That said, it's still, I'd say, really overproduced. So many little echoey, like, 
uh, Rotten Roads, Rotten Roads, like just kind of vocal, I don't know, sprinkles that are all over this song. And I think it does make it feel a little bit cheaper to me. And just so much, like I said, more about the groove. Otherwise, though, I do think it like sounds pretty good. I don't think it's a bad sounding song. And I'd say it gets like uh, five and a half out of ten. X Factor. Man, you can get five points for this if it feels really culturally significant or especially cool or timely or something. I just think that this song, that's like the opposite of what it's going for. So I'm going to give it zero out of five X Factor points. I think it's meant to blend completely into the country radio landscape and sound exactly like Small Town Boy, which it does. Altogether, that gives this song a score of nine and a half out of 25 in single Smackdown. That's our first one. So let's see where we go from here. Next song we got is Thomas Rhett's Look What God Gave Her. Now, Thomas Rhett, I think, on Tangled Up, his last album, definitely is towing the line between wanting to be a pop star and a country star. That's a very, very poppy album. I think there's actually, he does it better than most, but at the same time, um, I feel like pop music, you gotta freaking go there. You gotta be sexier and more aggressive and whatever for it to really feel cool. And when country stars just wanna be poppy, but don't want to actually be as sort of visceral as pop stars are, it just comes across feeling really vanilla and lame to me. And that's sometimes where it Tangled Up landed. But at the same time, I think like the actual song Life Changes from his album, that sort of showed me that Thomas Rhett's doing a new thing. Um, and he's doing a little bit better than anyone else, which is being self-referential about his fame in his lyrics. That's something we see a lot in pop music and in rap music. And I actually think Life Changes kind of works even if I'd say it's not at all country. So I don't know what Look What God Gave Her is about. I'm interested to see if he's going more country, if he's going more pop, if this song is like a tender ballad, like Woman Amen, um, or or some of the songs on uh, like these kind of woman revering songs like Female, or if it's going to be a little bit trashier version, like Gotta Get Me Some of That, because I could see it going either way. So don't know what to expect. Let's listen to the song. <laughs> Okay, so that was Look What God Gave Her by Thomas Rhett. It sounds a lot like a Maroon 5 song, and I'm looking at who wrote it right now, and it makes sense that it sounds like a Maroon 5 song. So it's Thomas Rhett, his father, Rhett Akins, Julian Bonetta, who I know has definitely worked with One Direction and some other pop stars, John Ryan, Jacob Kasher, Amar Malik. I know all those guys have written with Maroon 5 before, so this is very, very LA. This is definitely a pop song. It definitely feels like a pop song. It doesn't really resemble country at all, at least the traditional sounds of country that we associate with country because words mean things. Uh, but that song is about beholding a girl's beauty. He sees this girl and she's hot and God gave her her hotness. That's about what the song is. And it's definitely like a fun summery vibe. If you can put to bed the idea that like this ain't a country song, which, you know, sometimes it's hard to do when we call things country and not country because what's the point of having any designations maybe you think that we don't need to have them but it is confusing at a certain point this is like a disco-y fun summer jam i'm not taking its funness away from it that's pretty easy to bop to but let's get into the scores on this one lyrically the song is got a lot of heavenly puns she's got a smile on her angel face i'll never lose my faith uh he at one point says that uh she was designed to blow my mind uh, which I think is a little bit presumptuous. If we're getting all theological, she was designed to ref reflect God's beauty, um, not just to please another person. Uh, but in general, I think the intention here is to revere, I assume, his wife, uh, like that she is really, really beautiful. But there's not much interesting lyricism here, much like the song before. This was about the vibe. This was about the little guitar groove. Uh, he delivers it. Well, he delivers it in a nice way, but it's not that interesting of a thing to deliver. I think the line, I know she's got haters, but it ain't her fault, is kind of randomly placed there in the chorus. Um, just the idea that everyone's jealous of her for being hot. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't feel like it's a song where the lyrics are very important. I would also give this like 
uh, four and a half. Music and production on this song are definitely, definitely compelling and definitely not country. The little guitar thing is really fun. That little groove, I want to hear it really quick. Yeah, that's totally... Like, that's very, very fun. Um, the disco vibe is very fun. It sounds really nice. I mean, it does sound like a Maroon 5 record. And guess what? Those sound good. Those are good pop songs. So the sound of it is good. It's just not at all country. And I love, you know, the sounds of country music. I like that it's um, more about real life. And this song feels like it's much more about escapism. And that might be what he's going for. It's not my taste, though. And it's my channel, so I'll judge it the way I want. I think the sound of it is professional and sleek, not not sort of intimate and rootsy, which is always going to be what I prefer. But I, I mean, there's room for fun in that. But let's just give this, you know, let's say a six because it's fun. It's very fun. It's very fun. And then for X Factor, you know, this song's interesting. This Thomas Rhett really became a superstar with his last album. And so there is anticipation coming into his third album. What are you going to do? Are you going to pivot more in this direction or this direction? And it sounds like he's really trying to frame himself as like a kind of Justin Timberlake type character or a pop star on this record. He's trying to pivot. He's trying to, he's playing SNL. And so this definitely feels way more LA influenced, which is interesting, but I'm going to dock it points, even as I'm giving it some for being interesting, because it does feel like a smack in the face, the country music, whatever, if you're tired of that debate. I think it's a it's one worth having and so i'll give this a two in terms of x factor points because um yeah it's just not a country song but it is kind of interesting that he's sort of this prolific figure at the moment it's kind of weird maybe to write a song like this with your dad i don't know but uh i'll give it a two so all together that gives this song i think i don't remember exactly what i just gave it but i think it's a 12 that this song gets a 12 out of 25. And then finally, we got George Strait's Every Little Honky Tonk Bar. Now, a lot of you guys wanted me to listen to God and Country Music by George Strait. I thought that was going to be the single, and I love that song. And how can you freaking go wrong when you're talking about Lori McKenna, Luke Laird, I think Barry Dean, the third writer on that. I mean, just some of the best songwriters in the game. And uh, that song does, in fact, rule, but it's not George Strait's single. His single is Every Little Honky Tonk Bar. I know it's been out for a little bit. I have not listened to it, so let's give it a listen. Uh, George ain't retired, even though it seems like he retires every, you know, few years, but let's just see. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude, that song's awesome. You know, I'm, I sit here, I hem and I haw. I'm a nice guy. I don't want to, like, bash the pop country artists. And then you just hear a true blue country song and you're like, okay, you can, you know, simmer down now, Grady. It's not that big a deal to just say that wasn't country and this is what country music sounds like. Because this is what country music sounds like. That song rules. You know, there's instruments that are you know traditional to country music i hear fiddle i hear steel i hear a general honky tonk groove basically just give me a little fiddle and steel always man that song just is so refreshing compared to the ones that we heard and it's not like it's some big crazy you know lyrical statement it's just a pleasant song and it's and it's treading very well worn and cliche territory on its own but yeah that's a country song and thank goodness because First part of this video, I'm like, geez, am I still a country channel if this is what everything sounds like? But yeah, I am. And uh, this song rules. This song is awesome. It sounds really nice. What a comeback for George. It's just fun. A truly, truly fun song about, you know, what a bar is like. It's kind of like Toby Keith's I Love This Bar, just sort of describing the scenes and sights and sounds of a bar. There's many, and many, 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 many of these songs. And this one's done really well. Lyrically, there's actually some interesting wordplay in this. While the while the concepts of whiskey and smoke and neon are well-worn, they are sort of laid out in some interesting ways. The cadence is actually really quick on the verses here. The first line, whiskey is the gasoline that lights the fire that burns the bridge. That's complicated. You got to think about it. You're like, okay, whiskey 
is the gasoline that lights the fire that burns the bridge. What does that mean? And I guess it means that whiskey gets like a guy riled up like gasoline that ignites and burns a bridge. So some kind of relationship. So the whiskey is what makes him break up. And then it talks about ice being the water that's no longer running under it. That doesn't actually make any sense. I thought about that one for like the last minute before starting to talk. I don't get it. But all these little, these little things like stool holds the fool that pours the whiskey on his broken heart. So it's just kind of actually taking the imagery of the bar, whiskey, ice, stool, cigarettes, jukebox, dance floor, and explaining kind of where they are in the, uh, where they are, like how they are symbolically represented in this bar patron's life. It's kind of interesting. So I actually like that a lot. And then on the chorus, I like when he's spelling, I'll be L-I-V-N living. Uh, Cause I think it's communicating that he's drunk and that's why he can't spell. And it's just sort of funny. It's sort of, interestingly young from George Strait to to not include the I-N-G, just say L-I-V-N. I feel like that would actually be a kind of cool brand, Livin' by George Strait. It's funny, it works, and I think George delivers it really well. So I'll give it um, a seven, because I think they do a pretty creative job with some cliched subject matter. Sound and production on the song, it's nice, it breathes. The steel, the fiddle, it sounds good. The light drums, the guitar, it all just works. It's not overbearing, it's not overly produced. It's just a simple little bar song about what it's like to be at a honky-tonk bar. Almost reminds me of, uh, on the new Kenny Chesney album, you know, we're all here because we ain't all there. That That's almost the, kind of the vibe it reminds me of. It's very communal, it's very much a sing-along sort of song. and. I think it works really well and sounds really, really nice. And I would give this also maybe like, gosh, I love the sound of it. I'd give it an eight out of 10. X Factor points. I don't think it's some like crazy interesting song that George is coming back. God in country music, that was more of a statement. This, George is always gonna be interesting. He's the king of Texas music. And honestly, Texas music is having a big old influence in Nashville right now. So that's interesting. I like that honky tonk is kind of having a moment. That word, we got down to the honky tonk by Jake Owen. And now every little honky tonk bar, the idea of this sort of vibrant Texan bar scene where there is kind of this, uh, you know, red dirt country music sound happening and that's getting popularized in the Nashville sound once again. That's interesting, but in general, it's a bar song. So it's not some crazy thing. It's from a veteran artist. So, um, but it's doing pretty well. That's cool. But I'd give it like a two out of five, a two out of five in X factor points. So all told that gives every little honky tonk bar 17 out of 25. And it makes it easily the number one song in this list. We got at number one on Single Smackdown, George Strait's Every Little Honky Tonk Bar. At number two, Thomas Rhett's Look What God Gave Her. And at number three, Dustin Lynch's Riding Roads. Yeah, I mean, nothing crazy in this, in this video. I don't think there is some career-defining smash for any of them here. I think all of these songs are going to see some radio success. And they kind of represent the spectrum that country is including right now. And that's fairly interesting. But I think, you know, no kind of big statements being made here. So pretty generic, but some really good stuff. I really hope the George Strait song becomes a hit for him. I'd like to see him continue his comeback because that song is just so pleasant. And let's get more steel on the radio, you know? Uh, let me know what you guys think of these songs. And I, I, I really... Don't have much more to say than that. Things are good. Thanks for being patient with me. I'm back down to part-time at work, so I should be able to crank out a few more videos than I've been cranking out. Uh, thanks so much for the love on the channel, and I'll see you guys soon.